Welcome to Metaverse Adventures. My name is Immersive Matthew, and in this video, we're going to be exploring two key things about the Oculus Quest to ensure that you have a good experience. One, how do you get it comfortably on your face? So that's a big issue because a lot of people, of course, are having discomfort issues. And I'll show you what I've done to make mine more comfortable. And then secondly, and this is the most important part, how do you know you've got it on right? And not just talking for comfort, I'm talking about the visuals because it's not as obvious as you would think because sometimes you think you have it on right, but you don't. So you want to find out why and how to detect to see if yours is put on correctly? Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, before I begin, I want to really quickly recap because the very first video that I made for Metaverse Adventures, this is like some three months ago now, was about how to measure your IPD with the intention that when the Oculus Quest finally came out, that you'd be able to go ahead and dial yourself in accurately. But as you probably are all aware, there is no IPD number when you use that slider. And a lot of other HMDs, including the Oculus Rift, when you slide that knob around, you see how many millimeters uh, that slider is set to. So if you knew you were, say, 59, you could go ahead and slide it up and down and get yourself banged in. They chose not to put that feature out with the Oculus Quest. And I'm not a little altogether sure why Oculus did this. There's a lot of chatter on the internet about please put this back, Oculus. I mean, for no other reason than when you pass it up to somebody else for them to use, if they already know their IPD, they could accurately dial it in versus having to fiddle. But I think Oculus and where their head is at is they want you to fiddle and just kind of play around it in a more organic fashion to find your sweet spot. Because maybe you're 59 millimeters, but maybe a more comfortable place with the slider, maybe you're 60 or 62 or something like that. I think that's where they're at. It's still good to know what your IPD is, and I'm going to predict that at some point, Oculus is going to make the IPD value available inside the Quest, because apparently the circuitry in here does accommodate for that. So we'll see in, in future. But that aside, so IPD, if you went ahead and measured yours, I'm sorry, you can't go ahead and dial yourself in here. But you do know the range of this knob goes from 58 millimeters on the low end all the way up to 72 millimeters on the high end. So if you're 64, then you probably know that you're gonna be somewhere in the middle of that. And you know, if you're in the 59, you know you're gonna be somewhere in the bottom of that. So at least you've got a sort of rough idea when you put it on where to get it sort of started. But all that aside, the one thing I want to share with you in this video today is how do you get this on your face properly and properly both in terms of comfort and in terms of the visuals. And so I think what I'll do is I'll start with the comfort first because this is the first thing that is glaringly obvious when you first put on your Quest. And you'll see that my Quest has some modifications which I'll talk about in just a few moments. So on the comfort side, I've done a number of things to my quest to get it dialed in for me. And I think this is the big message that I want to impart with all of you watching this is that right now the way VR is at is a one size fits all. Sure, you've got some Velcro here to do some adjustments on the sides and the top, and that's great. But outside of that, you really don't have a lot of other fit adjustments. And that makes it a little bit difficult to get it right on everybody's face because all of our faces have different shapes. All the back of our heads have different sizes, craniums. Uh, we all just have different everything. And so it makes it very hard to get a one size fits all to perfectly fit everybody. And, and some people, they're lucky, they put it on and they're like, bang, it fits so well for them. And while there's others who have a lot of challenges with this and they just come forever, don't find it comfortable in the right spot. I am one of those people. When I first put on the Quest, I hated it actually. It was so heavy on my cheekbones and I had such dark, deep red marks that lasted for like an hour or so. I call that your Quest face and you've all experienced it I'm sure all the way around. But mine was particularly pronounced on my cheeks to the point where I thought I couldn't even play the Quest for more than 15 or 20 minutes because after a while, that sort of foam fabric would almost begin to burn like it was just a rad rash. So I had to find options and relatively quickly. 
the two things that I did for me, and these may work for you, they may not work for you. It really depends on your facial shape. So these are my suggestions. If it doesn't work for you, continue to explore other ways of doing it. The first thing that I did to make mine more comfortable is I added this little bit of foam here on the back. I just found some foam that from like a hardware store, it was for some sort of door seal. And I just stuck that on the back and that gave it a little bit more of a bump because I find with my head, when it goes on the back here, where it's supposed to go all the way deep on the back, like I'll show you the way they want you to do it, right? And you see Oculus, they're trying to encourage you to have it all the way down here. When I do that all the way down there, in order to get it tight enough to pull it all up, it really gets uncomfortably tight. So I was doing it that way when I first got it. I was doing exactly what Oculus said, and it was just really digging in because it was kind of pulling it all down this way and pulling those on. And what I did for the front, I could not get it more comfortable on my face. So I found just a little bit more material here, a lot of the hug my cranium. My cranium's not down here. Mine's a little higher up than maybe some people. I don't know. I'm not an expert on skull shapes. But other people who've borrowed my quest don't like this fabric, while others love it. So for me, I'm going to put it in the right spot here so you can see, my hugs right here, and without this piece, it just doesn't, it has a gap. It just doesn't hug very well. So that was the first thing I did, and that immediately took off some of that weight from my cheekbones by sort of lifting it up by the back of my skull. The second thing that I did is I went ahead and bought myself the Studio Form strap. Now, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. Uh, it is like 22 bucks. It's just a piece of fabric. But for me, it was worth every penny. And, and for others, eh, they say they don't really see a difference. But for me, what it does, and I'll just put it on right now and share with you. Okay, so you just put the strap in here like so. We'll put that in. And what you do is you get it comfortable. And right now I would say that it's uh, front heavy. It feels front heavy. But when I take these Velcro straps and I pull it up, it pulls basically on these arms here and it lifts it um, from your head. And it like instantly alleviates quite a bit of that weight on my face. And now my lower cheeks have almost nothing on them. It's just gently resting. Most of the frictions on my forehead, and I don't find that nearly as uncomfortable. And because the force is lifting it, it just has this generally lighter feeling. It weighs exactly the same, but it really does make for me a quite a big difference. Now, other people have had different results and they've done different things to get it comfortable. Some don't find, like I said, this at all helpful. What others are doing is they're putting a counterweight on the back here. And I got some examples. Uh, batteries is a good one. A uh, can of Campbell's soup. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's another good one. Uh, just anything that's got a bit of weight, about 500 grams of weight you want to have in the back. And that's going to then also pivot it and lift it a little bit off your face so that weight is more evenly distributed on top of your skull versus all strapped and squeezed onto your face. So that's the best things that I've seen so far. I haven't seen too many other uh, situations that have helped people. The strap and sincere to counterweight. Those are the two. And like I said, and maybe for some of you, this foam piece or something to give a little more snug fit on the very back of your skull. All right, I just want to pause right here before I move forward to the next section and share with you a quick update. As I was editing this video, VR Cover's latest model came in the mail. So I've had an opportunity to try that out and I have some updates for you that may interest you. First off, the original Oculus Quest facial interface, which I have here, which I took out, has that sort of sort of rougher type fabric, which not everyone loves. And like I said, I was getting light leakage, so I was finding different ways with tissue and whatnot to improve that. Well, the one that comes with the VR cover, I'm gonna show you here, it looks exactly the same sort of plastic thing, right? Same sort of plastic gasket that fits in. It has a different type of facial interface material. It's a pleather, and you can get a cover, which I was showing you earlier, which I was using before. I used to stuff this with paper, and this cover essentially goes on top of this uh, facial gasket like so. All right, so that's how it's supposed to go on. So this is the part that you can take off, throw in the washing machine, give it a wash, and put it back on. Or, if you wish, you can wear just the pleather directly on your face. 
I actually quite like the pleather on my face. I didn't think I would. Uh, even when I'm sweating a little bit, I don't really mind it being a little bit damp around the outside. Uh, but if you don't like that, go ahead and put the cover on. What's cool is that I ordered base, uh, the base model and I ordered the extra thick pad, which is thicker on both the top and the bottom as compared to the original. I'll just give you a quick show here so you can see the difference. So the uh, thick is on the bottom and the original is on the top. And it's the same on the other end too. It's again thicker on the top and then the bottom, or thicker on the bottom here than the top. I thought I would like the thicker one, but I've discovered that I actually prefer the thinner one, funny enough. And it's just thick enough that it can come down and get, it can come down and get on my nose gap. And in fact, it seals my face completely. I don't see anything now. No light leakage from the nose, certainly nothing around the outside. It is sealed black. Now, like I said, this may not work for everybody's face. All of our faces are different. And you might find the thicker one better, or you might find both of these are no good for you. And that's the downside. You know, it's like buying clothes online that you can't return. And you know what it's like when you buy clothes online. Chances are they're not always gonna fit the way you expected it. So if you do make that purchase, you're, you may find it doesn't work for you. But for me, this was the best investment. And I'm so glad that VR Cover fixed their problem. By the way, the problem with these pins in the bottom here, these weren't here in the original facial interfaces that VR Cover put out because they were working off just, I guess, an older design and Oculus uh, didn't tell them that they made that change. And so they ended up shipping with, without these things. And that meant the whole thing didn't fit quite as snug. But now that they fixed that and they got these covers, this is a great option. And there's one last thing I wanna talk about before we jump into the rest of the video as well, and that is the glass interface. All this is is a space that puts a little bit more distance between your glasses and the lenses of the Oculus Quest. And this is important because you don't want your lenses ever coming up against your glass lenses, coming up against the Oculus lenses because those two can friction together and you can get scratches but you put that spacer in. What's interesting is that you may not need that spacer if you do have the uh, VR covers, especially the thick one. Uh, my partner who wears glasses doesn't need the facial interface for glasses anymore. She just uses the VR cover and the thick one and for her it's even more comfortable and she gets a smidge more field of view. And that's something that's important to mention here. The more you have this coming away from your face, the thicker this is, the further that's coming out from your face, either by inserting the, the, you know, the glass gasket or a thicker cover, you are essentially pulling it further away from your eyes, which means that your field of view is gonna get narrower and narrower. And you can try this yourself. You can take the Oculus Quest, put it up to your face, and just push it on tight and get your face in there further and you will notice that the field of view actually just gets a little bigger. And it gets to a point where you can start seeing square edges. So there, there is a limit to how much you can push your face in here. And of course the opposite is true as well. If you pull it out, you get a more narrow field of view. So this is the balance you're trying to play with. The comfort, the field of view. If you got glasses, you can't touch the lenses. So again, there's, there's no one thing here that could work for you. There's multiple things here. You're gonna have to really experiment and play around with it and get yourself dialed in. But VR cover could be an option for you and I just wanted to put that in there. The next thing is now the visuals. Now this gets a little complicated and I'll tell you why. When I first got my Quest, the very first thing that I was quite disappointed by was the guard rays. And if you're not familiar with guard rays are, it's these sort of lines that come out and, and concentric rings, especially when you're in a, a dark scene with like bright text in the middle or something like that, you'll really see it. I was seeing it right when I got my Quest and it took me a few days to realize that it actually wasn't from the Quest. It was from light leakage coming around the sides of my face, coming in through the, the fabric here and this is before, and now I have a VR cover on here. Uh, it's just the regular fabric underneath, the Oculus fabric. But anyways, yeah, I found there was a light leakage. And when I realized that's what it was, I immediately looked for solutions. And just by that chance, the VR cover came in the mail. And it has just enough fabric to cover. And now, when I put on my Quest, other than that tiny bit of a nose gap, it's pitch black and I get no uh, god rays. And when I finally figured that out and I put these on and I wore that, I was like, wow, this is the very first kind of 
VR picture I've ever looked at that has like virtually no God rays. Oculus did a killer job in removing that because I really dislike God rays. I find that like you just want to like clean your glasses or something. It's always there. It's so irritating. But now I don't have any of those problems. But that's the thing that you might have. So when you get your quest on, what I have encouraged you to do is get a bright light behind you and just start pressing on the side, start squeezing the outer fabric in, uh, the facial gasket or the facial interface as it's called, just start squeezing that in and you might see, oh, I'm, I've got, you know, it gets darker. And, and I would do it with it off. Like right, mine, mine's not on, so I'm looking at complete pitch blackness and I can still see that I've got a little bit of light leakage just up here. So I would adjust that. I might put a bit of tissue paper underneath here to give a little more fullness because you really want to get sealed nice and tight on your face, get rid of all of those reflections from the outside world and get yourself locked into the quest. Now, the most challenging part about the quest is, okay, so you got it uncomfortably, you don't have any light leakage, it's great. How do you know you've got it in, on your eyeballs? And like I said in my very first video, you're trying to get the center of your eyes in the dead center of each lens. And you can take your quest and you can go and look at it is all these concentric rings. And as you look inside, they, they kind of go all the way in and in the middle, they stop. And it's about a four millimeter, you know, something in that neighborhood, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. It's hard to say exactly what that is. I don't want to put a ruler in there and scratch them. But there's a, there's a little spot that has none of those concentric rings. That is really the sweet spot. And when you look, it, it's small. It's about the size of your pupil. So it's very, very tiny. And if you're not dead center, looking in the center of that, that you know, the middle circle there, the sweet spot, then you're gonna get blurriness. Now, how can you tell? Well, first off, it's really obvious. If you've got your slider in the wrong spot, or just as importantly, if you've got this up too high or down too low, you're gonna start seeing blurriness. So that's your first real giveaway. If it's blurry at all, I mean at all, you got it in the wrong spot. When you've got it right, it should be super crisp and clear, and you should be able to make out the individual pixels, no problem. If you look carefully, you'll see the screen door effect. If you don't, you don't have it on right. So that's the first really obvious. That means you're way outside that sweet spot. The second thing, and this gets a little more tricky, is chromatic abrasion, looking for chromatic abrasion. So the way I like to do this is I like to go into the Oculus Home, put on my Quest, I'm gonna put it on right now for you. And all I do is I look at the text on the main home screen or that big sort of monitor that's in front of you. I just look at it and I start adjusting it on my face and you'll see very easily, and they're all the same way, if I push it down, so now that my eyeball is above the sweet spot, I start seeing like this red glow kind of coming out the bottom of all the characters. All the text on the screen right now has this sort of red glow towards the bottom of each. If I lift it up higher than it's supposed to be, then I start seeing a blue bottom on all the text. And that's called chromatic abrasion. So if you want to get it dialed in properly, it's not only using that slider, because you'll do the same thing, it, you're, you'll see it on the edge of the text if it's too wide or too narrow, You'll get the red on the outside and the blue on the inside or vice versa, depending on which way it's off. But once you get dialed in this way, if you want to adjust it, and I'm talking sometimes just one millimeter. I mean, right now I'm looking at it, it looks great, but I see a little bit red in the bottom, so I'm gonna adjust it up on my face. There we go, I got it bang on. Now you saw that, we're talking just a little bit. So that's one way to quickly know, am I dialed in correctly? And right now, all the text here looks sharp. I don't see any blue or red bleeding on any of the characters anywhere on here. Now, the next thing, and this is just as important as getting the colors right like that, is something called pupil swimming. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit record here because I'm gonna share this with you on the stream. So for this test, all you're gonna do is, again, we're gonna come right to your Oculus Home, just like I'm looking at right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the corner of that big kind of screen that's in front of you with all the icons. Just pick the left or right edge of it, okay? Look at that edge and then move your head side to side. Okay, just enough that you can still see the edge. And what I'm doing, I'm keeping my eyes dead focused on the edge of that screen. I'm not looking around, I'm moving it, looking at dead. What I'm looking for 
is as I'm going back and forth, I'm seeing is, does that edge appear to be straight the whole time I'm looking like this? Here's the edge of the wall or the screen. Is it straight? Or as I'm looking around, is it doing this sort of a thing, right? Keep my eyes focused on it, but it's kind of wiggling like that. That is something called pupil swimming. And believe it or not, it actually could be one of the culprits that's making you feel sick, kind of motion sickness from the quest. That kind of wiggly world is not something your brain is used to, and so the whole world is doing that, even if you can't see it because you're not looking at a, you know, a straight wall, a straight edge, if you can't, even if you can't see it, your mind is seeing it. And it's kind of like, whoa, what is going on in here? Am I drunk? Did I eat something bad? Like, why is the world wiggling and swimming like this? So it's called pupil swimming. So when you get yourself dialed in there, right, you're gonna go back and forth like that. And you, you can try this very easily. You can adjust it slightly above, maybe start seeing some of that blue text that I was talking about, you know, that blue edge on the bottom of text. And then do it again, and you'll instantly see what I mean. It really is like, like it's just uh, swimming away on me, right? Same with this, too low. You get the same thing, it's just all over the place. It looks really bizarre. And of course, if your IPD is set too wide, too narrow, you get the same sort of thing, and it feels actually even more weird, actually, than that. Than that. And so that's probably the one thing that I would urge everybody to spend a few minutes on. Find that edge, look back and forth, keeping your eyes like I am right now, focused on that edge, and see how straight it is. If it's not straight, if it's keeping, not keeping dead straight and still, adjust until you got it right. Now, part of that adjustment is once it's on your face, the one thing I would encourage you to play around with is the tilt of the actual head mount display. And by that I mean, this whole thing's on hinges. So I can tilt it up, right? I can tilt it down. And you'll find that depending on that tilt, you also can get pupil swimming. So we're not only talking about your IPD this way, we're talking about your IPD this way, and we're also talking about the tilt, right, on your actual quest. And this is a tough one, because obviously, if your face is a little bit of a different shape, and your forehead and your cheeks aren't, you know, as they have here, which is more or less your forehead's a little bit higher in front than your cheeks. That's how they've designed it. If your cheeks are more protruded and your forehead's a little bit more back, you know, even by just like half a centimeter, you know, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, it doesn't take much. Then all of a sudden that screen is gonna be tilted. It's gonna be tilted the wrong way. And that tilting makes, basically means that the lens, right, the lens in front of your eyeball is like this or like that. And again, that causes pupil swimming. And it's unfortunate because this one's a little bit harder to address. And really how you have to do this is you need to put tissue paper or bits of foam, like those great those makeup pads, the little foam triangles were great, cut them up and stick them in here. You need to put something to make it a little bit thicker. And of course you would need like a VR cover or something because the Oculus stock doesn't have anywhere to really put that material. But you're gonna to have to play around and try to get your gasket. And I hope that the manufacturers like VR Cover and others start to offer facial gaskets that maybe thicker on the top and thinner on the bottom, and or you know thicker on the bottom and thinner on the top, so you can get that dialed onto your face as accurately as possible. Because getting yourself dialed in right, make sure you have no pupil swimming, no chromatic abrasions, equals less eye strain. You don't get headaches. You won't get as queasy. Although if you're a VR newbie. You're gonna go through a period of getting used to it no matter how well you've dialed into this, but it helps and reduces how much time you know, it takes before you get sick. So I highly encourage you, at this video, get out your quest and start to experiment with that pupil swimming and that chromatic abrasion to see if you really got it dialed in. And I'd love to hear you from the comments. When you went back and double checked, after watching this video, were you dialed in right? Or did you notice some pupil swimming and this video helped you? I would love to hear your comments. And hey, three months doing this now. I love making Metaverse Adventures. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you in my weekly news program, which is every Saturday and it's solely focused right now on the Oculus Quest, which in my opinion is the only VR headset right now to even worry about. I think it's the best for a whole pile of reasons. And my review is coming on this device. I just wanna spend some time with it before I waded into the waters. That's all for now, and as always, we'll see you in the Metaverse.